Kevin, nice to meet you. Moro, great to see you. All right. These are the railings I emailed you about. Um, okay. So you can see they're a little rusted, the paint's chipping away, but they feel structurally sound. I'm wondering if there's anything we could do to restore them. This is a very common problem for metal. Okay. Once the paint is starting to flake it away, the metal will be exposed to the, all the elements and the rust is starting to show in through. We can fix that, but I assume this house was built before 1978. Yeah, it was built in the 1930s. All right, in this case, we need to test for lead paint. Okay. Okay. Oh, with my utility knife, I want to scrape a little bit here because I want to do a test for lead paint. And we have to go all the way down to the first coat of paint. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna put my utility knife away. And this is what we use for make the, uh, the test. Okay. There's a part A and part B. We're gonna crush the A, crush the B, and then we're gonna shake it up really good. And then we're just gonna rub this tip on the metal. Well, look at that. If we had the presence of lead paint, the tip of the swab would turn pink or reddish. I think we're good to go, but okay. double check. We're gonna use a card and make sure that we clear to go. Uh, the dot on this card has a trace of lead paint and should be pink. So look at that, it's turning pinkish reddish. That means the test works and there's no lead on the railings and uh, we're ready to do the work. Great. Ready to go? Let's go. Okay, for the flat surface, we're gonna use a metal blade with the scraper. And then for all the curved surface, we're gonna use a wire brush. So we're we trying to scrape off the paint or the rust? Well, at this point, we're trying to scrape the paint and the rust because the spilling paint all over this railing and there's lots of rust showing through. We're gonna get rid of both of them at the same time. We clean up any debris from the scraping with the scrubbing pad. We're gonna lightly sand everything with 150 grit sandpaper. All right, Kevin, we're gonna use the Miner Spirit to wipe off all the dust on those railings, and we'll give it a nice foundation for our oil-based primer. For our primer coat, we're gonna use this oil-based primer. It's a metal primer, specifically designed for metal surfaces. It's also a rust preventer. We are using an oil-based primer because it will stand out better to all the elements. All right, just go nice and smooth. You don't need to be a heavier coat, all right? For the tight areas hard to reach with the roller, we're gonna just touch up with the brush, all right? Okay, Kevin, for our top coat, we're gonna use this high gloss black DTM, which stands for direct metal, okay? And we're gonna do exactly as we did with the primer coat. This is four inch fabric roller. You're just gonna go nice and smooth, just like that. Let's do as much as we can with the roller. Got it. So is there any reason to paint it instead of using spray paint? Well, the results will be the same, but the spray, you're gonna have to do a lot of my protection. So this is gonna look just fine. We're gonna let that dry for a couple of hours and then we can apply the second coat. Well, Kevin, what do you think about this? Wow, I mean, they look, they look really, really good. I couldn't be happier with the way they turned out and it's really given new life to my old railings. We did a good job. Yes. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you a spray primer can 
and also the painting can that we use. What I want you to do is keep your eye on those railings so if you see any faded spot or any scratch here and there, take care of that right away to prevent all that rusty to coming back. And doing that, this railing is gonna look good for a long time. Great. Deal? Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a nice transformation yeah. for an old railing. That came out nice. Yeah, it looks yeah. good. And you got lucky that there was no lead. That's always yes. a good sign. And just so I understand it correctly, you sort of did a secondary test. After you determined with your stick that there wasn't lead, you went back and used the card they gave you. And it's sort of just to prove that the stick is actually capable of finding lead. You kind of want to make sure that you don't get a false negative. Yeah, absolutely. You want to make sure that the test you did at the metal railings, it was correct. By mm -hmm. showing some pinkish or right. red here, it shows you that the, the test was good. Because we know that this card has little traces of lead traces in it. Traces right of there. lead right in it. Now, had we found lead, Tommy, it's a whole different ballgame. It's a whole different ballgame. Any professional that's working in a house, whether it's an electrician, a plumber, a carpenter, a painter, if you discover lead on a house, on the outside, if you find 20 square feet or more, on a wall, on the inside, six square feet or more on a wall. Right. You have to protect yourself, the worker, and the homeowner. Right, and you guys are certified, right? You guys are going through classes. You have, yeah. to. You have to take a class. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what is the protocol? Let's talk about sort of just protecting the area. Protecting the area if you find lead paint. So you're gonna have to protect at least 10 feet from the working area and you have to use a heavy duty plastic tape and you have to use suit mask respirator rated by lead paint right and you're going to have to hang signs to let people know what's going on in that area there right and the, that little thing here is one pamphlet that you have to handle to the homeowner saying proven to them and showing that has the his house has lead paint on it. Yeah, right. that has to be given to the homeowner 10 days before you can even start work they have to sign it and get it back to you sort of information that they need to have kind of their bill of rights to let them know what they're faced it up that's uh, right there's a lot of work to be done to protect the homeowner especially if you have a child six years or younger yeah. and a woman that's pregnant that's the dust is really a, a a problem and it can cause neurological problems and other physical problems. I mean it can cause problems in anybody but certainly really yeah. bad for children um, yeah. and for pregnant women. And in terms of disposal we've protected the site, we've protected the workers, we've informed the homeowners, the job is done, yeah. what's the disposal process? Everything that has in that plastic, has the, you folded the plastic really So the respirator, careful. the suit, the gloves, everything? Everything goes to the trash bag yep. and you tie it up and you use a duct tape to make sure that nothing flies out and this will help. And where does it go? It just goes in the trash after that. As long as it's sealed up. As long as it's sealed up. The big deal is, is you want to make sure that that space is cleaner yeah. when you leave than it was when you arrived. Seems like a long way to go, but uh, the alternative is kind of nasty. So. Yeah. yeah. All right, good job and good information, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.